everyone. Welcome to another awesome day of broadcasting excellence. Without the help of Ken, who managed to come up with a bunch of new questions about the topic at hand, but I have to, in order to figure out what he's saying, I have to interrogate him on live TV, and I'm not willing to do that, so we're just going to have to shelve that part of the conversation for another day. It's what happens if I have to do some pre-prep for the show so I don't wander in here into a lit room and look all lost and pathetic. No one wants a Richard who doesn't know what he's doing. So... Let's talk about the upcoming broadcast schedule real quick. So if you want to purchase one of our training bundles uh, that support the channel, we greatly appreciate that. As always, uh, we have several video editors that are working for us full time and Margaret. And that's just the part um, that's the direct operating cost plus any of the speakers that we have here on the show with us. So uh, in terms of the upcoming broadcast schedule, today is many to many. OK, and I was trying to get, talk with Ken. In fact, we did Ken last time. I don't understand Ken's question and I can't read it right now and troubleshoot it. So I have to, all the hot air balloon stuff. I'm just going to shelf and not discuss that. So yesterday we covered this. I'm going to I'm going to briefly cover this real quick right here. So yesterday we have this sample file that Margaret's going to make available to us. And what it was was a conversation really about mechanically controlling FileMaker. When I say mechanically controlling FileMaker, I mean that if FileMaker only does what we explicitly code it to do or program it to do. And the coding is not difficult. It's pretty basic English. We all saw that. And some of you, of course, as I did it, had imp I suggest improvements on how to make it maybe make it better or how to do it differently. But the, but the fundamental was that we had two buttons here that would do things and they would only run what the code would execute. And, and this is a very, very important top. I'm just going to leave this with this. So we said, hey, let's delete or pretend to delete a related record. And, and we're going to segue right off of this in today's topic. But the idea was that if you can tell, like you hire an intern, and it's back to like that problem pr problemista movie, you hire an intern, but you tell them what to do. Okay, I want you to go to this, pop open a new window. Yes, do a find for this. Yes, click in here, copy that, paste over here, and then close the window. If you can verbalize those instructions to someone who's working with you, then you can program FileMaker to do anything you want. It's that simple. All you have to do is get to the point where you can verbally articulate the manual user steps. Open a window, perform a find, print, type in this field, type some stuff, okay? Jump over this layout, close window. If you can do that, you can do anything in FileMaker. You can be very successful with that. And that's kind of how yesterday ended. This is the mechanical control. This is the intermediate level of of, of, of what I consider programming. So when, when when I was talking to Jess, we were trying to ascertain her skill set level where she was, understand that brand new developers just get it to work and they don't even really kind of fully know how it worked. They just were going 5,000 miles an hour. They probably have a little tension deficit disorder. A lot of people have a little bit of that. They're partly creative people who want to do creative problem solving. And they're just happy it works. Then in here somewhere, what happens in these numbers, some of us are like, I, I used to be way up here, then I've kind of backslid into this spot about right here. But these are general guidelines, right? You're not necessarily certified, but and you may have 10 or 20 years of experience. Some people uh, come to FileMaker, they never progress past this intermediate or maybe a high intermediate level. But when you get to this, you start to run into performance issues. And the way you control performance problems with any programming language is you precisely control when it does what it thinks. It's like it's like you're the Marine or the boot camp in the Marine, uh, especially the Marine Corps. It's like, don't think, I'll tell you when to think, soldier, right? So Marine, don't think, you know, I'll tell you when to think, right? I'll think for you, okay? That's what you want to do to FileMaker. You want to tell FileMaker, FileMaker, don't think, don't, don't, don't sh, 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 sh. Don't think, I will tell you what to think. And then you program very specifically what it does. You don't want a bunch of automatic summary fields running or crazy unstored calculations running because it's going to run those when it wants to. You want it to only do what you want it to do when you press a button or you have a trigger that does it. Okay, that's how you control and you make performance better. That's step one. Then you get into like crazy super Nick level stuff and above. And then there's all sorts of weird outliers on how that can go in terms of making performance better. But this is this idea of mechanically controlling everything, especially if it's an area that has performance issues. Because probably if it's doing something slow, if FileMaker is probably doing stuff behind your back, right? It's like, you know, you turn your back on your five best friends and they're talking trash about you behind your back. Or maybe, yeah, you, you don't even know they're doing it, except you're like, why is it so slow, right? Why is it so slow? And they're back there 
not helping pull, like the horses pulling the wagon. You turn their back on them and the horses are going the other way. It's like so much for that, right? You want everyone pulling the same way. So that's what this is about. And this tells them, this coding tells them exactly what you want them to do. It's such an important concept. In my mind, this is more important than minute to mini in the big scheme of things, because you can get pretty far. As long as you know this, you can do just about damn it. And this is the same with any coding or programming language, but this is pretty easy. Pop a new window, enter a find mode. There's all sorts of assumptions here we don't have to worry about, because FileMaker, Claris, the Claris FileMaker platform simplifies it so much. It's so great. So uh, I'm done with that for the moment, but we're going to be going back and doing more of that here uh, in the future. So we're going to talk about many, many today. Mark, do we have any upfront questions real quick before I go whizzing off into the weeds? We're pretty much good, to be honest. So okay, uh, there was like the Ken many to many question other the other day, but he I I he he threw. That's why I wanted to talk to him. He starts using terminology that I don't use, and we specifically spent days on Ken's many to many design back in the live stream. So I somehow he took that and did something different and then is asking me about it, but he can't ask me about it on live TV because I have to think about it and I can't really do tech support for your thing in front of, you know, a hundred <laughs> other people. It's just not polite to them. So um, I, I was beating this file open here uh, initially. And what I wanted to do was uh, have a sample file here and, and kind of, it, and there's two main takeaways to this today. Um, and let's just talk about the mechanics of one to many real quick or wh what that even looks like. So I have a student database right here. Uh, I'm going to put the name in here real quick. And then I'm going to come over here to the uh, courses table and I'm going to say course name. And, and this is really kind of an important deal. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, so I have this right here. I'm going to pop a new window. So this is a table and a layout that belongs to students. This is a table that belongs to courses. For the moment, these are the only two people pieces that we care about, okay, if that makes any sense. I'm gonna drag the uh, course name on here. So this is where the whole issue, let's just talk about this from a basic standpoint of this, right? Um, we have, uh, let's say that we have students over here, or let's, in fact, if I go to layout, I'm gonna go to, uh, let me, can I go to, let me go to table view over here. Now, let me just go to list view. List view and table view are very similar, but um, yeah, it's a little bit ugly. Let me move this up. Just give me a second because what I want to do is if I demo this correctly, this will be super. And I was trying to find where I'd done this at. It's either in a video. It's somewhere. I don't know. It's a video. or That's a problem with I create so much content, it confuses people. So I'm going to do Richard. If I do, oh, let me say, let me, let me delete that. Delete record. New record. There we go. We got Richard. Uh, Ken, we got Jesse, we got Code to Go, which I forget his name. I got uh, uh, David, more than one David. I got uh, Austin. Austin's here as well. So here, so this is just some random people. Then these are courses over here. So let's just say that I'm going to create a new record, and this is going to be called Math. Uh, let's just call, yeah, algebra, if I can even spell that. All right, so here it is. So here is the rub. With, with many to many, I'm going to walk through this, and then and then once I get through some basic definitions here, we'll, we'll, we'll move forward from that. So this, in this table right here, there's a table of, of students, and and we have this thing in databases called normalization where you don't duplicate records unnecessarily. It's kind of a loose slang kind of definition of that. The idea is that each record is a unique thing. So Richard is unique. I'm going to just go without last names. Let's pretend there's only one Richard on the planet, one Ken, one Jesse, one Code to Go. And they are only going to be in this database once and once ever because that's what proper database design is. It gets into a bunch of advanced philosophy, et cetera, et cetera. But it's an important concept that you should have a list somewhere of unique people. Over here would be a list of unique courses. You could have math and English 1A and cal algebra 2 and pre-calculus and all this. Sort of, and I'm thinking high school level math here. So the issue becomes when you're building a relational database that that let's just say that that these three people at the bottom, Code to Go, Dave, and Austin, are uh, registered in math and algebra. Okay, I'm just going to get rid of the word math. I'll call algebra because that screws my head up. So they're registered to take algebra. So how do we build this in a database? Right now, there's no relationships in here. How do we make this work? And the idea would be is that that somehow when you're over here, you should be able to see 
the names of the people. In fact, you, what, you, what a lot of people would do is they're building a system is that they would say, well, I need the, mm, I'm in the course, I need the name of the student, okay? And, and you'll see what happens here. You put the name of the student in here, you're like, okay, I got code, code, code to go, okay? And then you're like, well, but David's also in there too. Well, I can't really delete code to go. I need code to go and David and Austin. So you could say, well, maybe I want name of student <laughs> number two. And then you create that. And then name of student number three. Brand new FileMaker people do this, okay? And at the end of the day, if it works, who's to say they're wrong? If, they, if it works and it's successful and everyone who's involved with that endeavor is happy, great. But you will run out of flexibility because at some point, the, the, it's like the, when we originally did talk to, to uh, Hot Air Balloon Kid about this, I said, well, how many pilots are you going to have? And he goes, oh, one or two. And then he goes, well, but then there might be three. And I go, you're sure? And he goes, well, then there might be four or five <laughs> different pilots who fly a balloon. And so suddenly defining these fields, number pilot two, pilot three, pilot four, pilot five, suddenly becomes unwieldy. And it makes it really hard to create reports and other things like that. So what you want to do is you realize that there's a name of a student in here. And uh, I'm going to, I'm just going to delete that one, delete that one. I'm going to hit OK. And so we're over here and you're like, well, you could put a return key in here and put David and put a return key here and put Austin. And this could kind of work, except the problem is once again, when you do reporting, when you do reporting, you need to be able to have these people in on individual records. Over here, they're on individual records, right? And you could put there in, if you could come over here and tell me uh, on this layout right here, I'm gonna, the, this ID is just ginormous. Let me move it up there, move this over here, move this over here. I'm gonna define a new field. I'm gonna call it course, not caps, doesn't really matter. Create, create, okay. And I move it up here. Okay, Margaret, you should probably be having questions here pretty soon on this, okay? Mm -hmm. So this is this is the logical process, what I'm doing is why people fail. So then they say, oh, we're gonna do algebra. And you're like, that algebra. And then you're like, yeah, that makes perfect sense. Al, I still spelled it wrong. Right click. You have to put the G before the E. There we go, there. got it. Yep. And then you put it here, and then you put it here. And then you come over here and you're like browse mode. And you're like, aha, but we're gonna have another course that's gonna be called Math 1A, which at college was basically coherent writing, okay? And you're like, well, how do I put Math 1A over, or English 1A over here, or Math 1A or whatever it's gonna be, right? You're like, well, I have to put a return key or something like that, right? Um, and you're like, well, somehow we get into these multiple values. The problem is, is that when you put multiple values in a field, it gives you, you can solve some problems with that, but you really need it to be individualized. And so this, so, so you can imagine that what this could look like. Code to go could be like, um, you know, then he has, you know, then he has a uh, volleyball, right? Cause it's PE. Then he has social studies or whatever they call it, studies. Then he has, you know, introduction to basket weaving, right? And so there's a two G, he's got two uh, GEs in there. <laughs> uh, so um, the rub is that you start to create a schedule like this, but then you're saying, well, I want to look up the course and the time from here. Well, this, how do you get the time for this one and the time for this one? And where is it in the class and all this? This is the fundamental kind of problem of why you have to build these intermediary tables. And what people say, they call them, they, uh, uh, Ken did this a little bit ago, and I'm not picking on Ken, I'm just gonna say that I don't train it this way. I don't use the word join table and I don't use the word cross-reference table because whenever people do that, and, and Ken, don't get mad at me, I'm saying, but generally when people do this is because they don't understand the business process. What they what, what happens, they build this, they build this as a database person, you know that that this is gonna lead, you're gonna you're not gonna be able to like create a legitimate schedule. Like here's a piece of paper with your class of where to go. There's no way to actually have the schedule lock into here and next to that. Like how does that even work? It, it won't work. You you boxed yourself into the corner. You've painted the entire room. You painted yourself in the corner. There's no way to get out of the room without stepping on the paint and destroying the paint job. The paint's wet. So you end up needing something else in the database. 
and and people go and database people who don't know they they see this problem but they don't immediately understand the business model go we need a join table okay and so what they'll do is they're literally going to a database and they'll and they'll go to tables and they'll create a new table called join and they just know it's in there because that they know that that's always like the default answer right it's like the running joke on what well, Star Trek was it was always 42 or something like that. You'd see all the doors. It's like this random. If there was an answer that someone didn't understand, it was 42. Okay. Um, and so whenever they don't understand a design, they're like, oh, we'll throw a join table in there and it'll be better. Um, the problem is, is that FileMaker is supposed to mimic your, your world of what you do, of what you manage and what you care about. Okay. Ed Burkle, fire service, right? He's got people who need a fire inspection. He has properties, right? We talked about this with him. How do you connect these things together? That's because there's business processes in the middle. If you as a developer don't know what the business processes are in between these two outside edge, outside pieces, right? They're like end caps and there's stuff in the middle here, right? There's stuff in the middle. Um, what are those things in the middle? You need to have more of a conversation about business. Forget database. It has nothing to do with FileMaker. It has nothing to do with SQL or anything else. You don't understand the business well enough to build a database system, okay? We could build one that's going to eventually suck, and then you'll have to do it all over again. I'm trying to get you to design it on paper, discuss it, scribble, scratch, do why, do, draw some pictures, get to a point where you fundamentally understand all the moving pieces, then build the database, right? Very important. So, Mark, do we have any questions anywhere? Uh, no, I mean, we. Uh, I'm kind of curious as to like, what questions do you ask? You just, do you just have to talk until like the truth comes out? Or is there like, yes, any, like one yeah, question? in fact, in fact, this is so funny because we did this before and you weren't quite, it's so funny. So everyone here, the reason why we repeat these topics and I'm not picking on anyone, we've already had this conversation probably three or four times on the live streams over the last three or four years, okay? I'm not picking on anyone. People's brains have to be in a position where they're ready to receive the information because they are at a point in their lives where they're ready to, 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 to move forward with this conversation. Like, you go to, I went to my wife. Hey, honey. But she wasn't my wife. She was a girlfriend. I said, would you like to marry me? Or would you please marry me? Would you desperately marry me because I'm desperate? Whatever I said. And if she was busy in life and wasn't mentally ready for that, she's like, what? That's crazy, right? Claris is the same way. You have a you have a suggestion to them. And if they're not in a point where they're receptive to that conversation, they'll ignore it. They'll say it nicely. They won't say, no, I won't marry you. They will uh, <laughs> they will just ignore it. And the idea, and you have to realize it is what it is, and you come back to it in six months or three months when they're maybe more receptive because they're in a spot in their life where they're more receptive. Margaret, we discussed this six months ago or three months ago, four months ago. And it was you weren't receptive to it, therefore you're asking questions. Now you're receptive. That's why, for all of you wondering, and I don't mind, I keep we keep repeating some of the topics. Some of you've been around a long time. You're like, or oh, we get tired of it, we never come back again because Richard's boring. Um, but the idea is that we repeat the topics because there'll be new people who'll be receptive to it. Or I remind you of something you've already forgotten. So, so you talk. Let's say you're talking to this school. This is a school, or this is like front side doing training. This is training. Students, courses. And if you sense that you've got this like turd right here, this is a tur this is a turd, T-U-R-D. It's doo-doo out of a dog. Okay. This is a turd. These are all turds. These are waiting. When you see this, you should stop and, and start talking to the customers. And, and Margaret says, should you waterboard them or something? Do it nicely, but you need to interrogate the customer and find out how it works. Now I'm using schools and classes and because it's kind of an analogy that most people kind of understood. Some most people somewhere at some point went to school somehow. Okay. Um and maybe you remember bits and pieces of this, but you remember you had instructors or teachers, and then you had a course that you were studying. If that's all you remember, that's fine. So then I would say I would go to the school administrator or the front site people and I said, hey, it's got to be more than this because this is algebra. Because remember, we say that one record can be in here once and once ever. If I go to layout mode, I'm going to roll this up. I'll go to browse mode. So now we have English. And then we have 
English 1B, which is, and so then, and then in here would be a description next to it, and it would explain what that course is, what the curriculum is, and what are the requirements of the students to complete that specific course. And, and then one of the rules in databases are, is that as a general rule, we don't repeat data. So we don't put algebra in here five times because this, this record right here, if this is the course, is one record equals one unique course. Over here, students, one student equals one unique student. Well, well, if, if algebra is offered, you know, fall, spring, and summer, then that would be three times it's offered. It should be in here three times. See, that's what you would ask. See, you'd ask that question, Margaret, as you're pouring water in their head, right? And they're going and they're spitting it up and they're you're being waterboarding them, right? And they and they go, but how do we do three of these? And you're like, aha, you offered three classes of algebra. And then you then you ask yourself, okay, if you want to be want me to stop waterboarding you, <laughs> uh, tell me how often do you offer these and how does that work? And they say, well, we offer them at different times in different classrooms and different locations. And hell, there's different instructors. And you're like, okay, so there is an occurrence, occurrence of the course. And so I had pre-staged this a little bit here. I'm going to pop a new window. And I'm going to say that, that what we call those are, in my terminology, I call them classes. So a class is going to be, um, and I'm just going to put it up here, classes. Okay, I'm going to do the keyboard shortcut for making stuff really big. Classes, copy, layout, paste. These are students. Okay, this over here, layout is paste, is course. So a course, and a lot of times for, to help people's brains out when I'm doing this, I will call it a course catalog. In fact, in Big Valley Market, you see there will be catalogs in there. That's like a master catalog. The idea of like, I had a big paper catalog and it's all the courses that UC Davis, so UC Davis would do this. University of California, Davis, engineering degree. They still do it. I'm sure it's all electric or PDF or digital or whatever, but it used to be printed paper. And you'd have the master course catalog of all the courses they have or will offer, ever offered. Then they have a smaller book, which is all the occurrences of the classes. It's a different publication and it's made with crappier paper because they expect people to use it for three months and throw it away. And so this is the course catalog, the master course catalog. These are occurrences of a course. So if I go to browse mode here, go to browse mode here, browse mode here, and I'm on this one, I'm gonna say, roll this up, move this up here, roll this over here. That's the class ID. I can say, I could say it would be the class name, which would be the course name, right? Uh, oh, hang on. I'm about to screw that up. Don't save. I want classes. I want course name. I would also say course date because this is one of the things, the differentiating items here, right? Course date, create, course, uh, you put time in there too technically, but whatever. And then the location of it, right? Because you could have the same course. This always screwed people up. Even in, I went to a really big high school and I went running into a class that was not my class and I thought it was my class. Had the same name, same time slot. It was in one room over and I went running into the wrong one and they go, who the hell are you and why are you here? And I was a freshman. I looked really stupid. So I'll never forget that. I'm like, ooh, don't do that again. So, um, so we put this over here. We got the course name. We got the date. Over here, classes. Okay, so we're going to do a new record right here. I'm just going to put something here. I'm going to say uh, English 1A and I'm going to say it's today or I'm just going to say, to say it's a one-day class, whatever. Just pick, go with go with me on this, right? It could be like a quarter, like fall quarter, something like that. Then I duplicate English 1A, and it's going to be the one tomorrow, okay? Different class. It's a, it's like a, it's like a, you know, we could change this. Let's just do this. Uh, hmm, remedial <laughs> driving from the DMV. So if you get a speeding ticket in some states, uh, uh, uh. And I'm in California, uh, 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 and I pass a highway patrolman in my Millennium Falcon minivan. They don't like that, and you get the little woo, 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 right? So they give us remedial, and it's a one-day class. So let's make it a little easier, right? So this is going to be remedial, remedial driving. And they have you go to a class, and they say, please don't drive fast. Here is the class. Uh, maybe it's like I'll put it on different months because we don't want to have a class every day. Then we'll have like this one here. And so all of these right here are going to be, 
And this is what you have to talk to your customer about and get this information on them. These right here are going to be uh, occurrences of this one right here. So what is one record over here? One record over here is one unique occurrence of a course. A course occurred in January, February. It's a unique occurrence. This is a one unique course. Okay, yes, we follow, everyone follows. The problem is that we still have, so a student is going to go, so, so code to go David and Austin are, are all got speeding tickets and they suck. Well, they don't suck. I get the last thing I got was that people were camped in the fast lane and in Texas and stuff, you get tickets for that in cool states. And I'm in California where a Prius going 55 in a 60 or a 70 mile lane in the left lane and I pass them on the right, I get a ticket, okay? I really hate California. Okay, so I'm going to come over here. I'm going to put that in. You three are all busted with me. We are all going way too fast. Okay, so they're in class with me. And da uh, David Angel is going to get me thrown out of class for the shenanigans that he pulls. So, so then we're like, okay, we're in this class, okay, but we're all going to be in the February class together. And, like, we're back to this. So then we're over here. Then, like, how do you put, you know, there's a tie, but then we, how do we put David Angel because then we have a field and we'd say David and code to go. And so we're, we still have a problem. You're over here. If you're trying to shove multiple values into a thing to create the, this, forget the serial numbers now, just go by name, right? So this, this remedial driving connects us this remedial driving here. Okay. So that's a connection there. That makes sense. That connects there to each of those. Okay. So that actually like that would make sense. Right. But if you come over here and you, and, and this is where, Margaret, you want to know when, when to waterboard, when and when not to waterboard, okay? If I go over here to classes and I say student name, student name, and I create that, yep, right there. I'm going to put it over here. Actually, I'm going to... Eh, I'm gonna for now. I'm gonna get rid of the time because it, it, you got everyone here gets the idea. Jesse, are you here? You have questions? You haven't asked any questions yet. Okay. Uh, Jesse is indeed here. There okay. are. They have been talking, but no questions. Okay, so the idea here is that is that you know where you need to waterboard when you end up doing when you're you're like okay this is the name and this is the name and I got code the code to go and you're like either I have to define like code student name two and three and four and five and six like Ken Hot Air Balloon Ken was doing or I have to put a return key in here and um, you know do that. And then it matches over there. And so as soon as you start doing this kind of thing here, like this to get all the student names in here. That means that you should have a portal, right? Yeah, you could do a portal. But, okay, but then you come over here and you're like, well, yeah, but I'm going to remedial DMV, but I'm also enrolled in and getting my PhD. See, he's PhD. He's, got a, he's working on his doctorate of, you know, history. Okay. Well, then it connects you got multiple entries in a, if any time you have multiple entries in a field to make the database work, you're missing structure of the database. You need to waterboard more. If you feel compelled to put, like, like over here, like if I go over here to remedial driving, all, do, do, do we see the need to put remedial anything else over here under this name, like algebra or something, right? No, no, that's the one name for this class. You see what I'm saying here? Over here it has one name. I do, I do not feel compelled. I'm trying to do this in plain English. I don't feel compelled to add other things. Well, this is its one name. In this class over here, this is its one name. So since I don't feel compelled to add additional values over here, these two probably connect together, and they can connect together, okay? And so if I go to relationships and I'm just going to make that one go away. So we have these up here. I got, let's just go by name. We'll forget the primary keys. Uh, no, yeah, we need keys. We'll use primary keys. Okay. You got the course ID primary key. The, 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 the Wherever the course is unique. Okay. The course is unique. That owns the key. So this would be one course to many, right? The many is where the foreign key goes, right? Margaret, you follow that? So the course is one. There'll be many implementations of it. Where you have the many is where the foreign key goes. Do you understand what I just said? Wait, so. Hang on. Let me just do it real quick and let me help this make it visual. ID, the ID, uh, 
let me see, ID course underscore foreign key. Oh, that's an underscore, uh, underscore foreign key, create. Okay, I'm gonna come back over here. So understand, okay, so that, and so this, forget, don't look at the, well, actually these three here match these three up across. So I wanna connect these two because I believe as an instructor, I don't feel like over here, I felt compelled like students could have more than one class and put more than, something's not right over here. This looks pretty good because I don't feel compelled to add additional values in here. However, one, one course remedial dri driving it with the DMV, Department of Motor Vehicles, is one record here, and it would relationally connect to these three here. That makes perfect sense. There's nothing weird about that, right? So how do I connect it? Well, if this is the parent, and you have many childs that belong to it, parent, child, primary key, foreign key, primary key to foreign key. And notice that FileMaker even senses this, because if you look down here on this, and I do the zoomy zoom zoom on it, okay, it sees that this will be an auto enter by a serial number, and this is not an auto number. So FileMaker says this is a one to many. That's what they call that a crow's foot. That's a one to many, okay. So FileMaker has already kind of sensed this for us. Does that make sense? Yes. So we say, okay, so now, once again, we've established a relationship, but there's nothing on the layout. This gets back to yesterday where you can put a portal over here. We could. We'd do the portal real quick. Let's do this follow-up from yesterday. Layout mode. I'm going to grab a portal tool. I'm going to drag it over here. The portal is going to show me front through the classes. I'm not course. These are classes. What's a class? It's a end of, it's a course that's offered at a date and time somewhere. So, so you could here you can only have one rem, uh, remedial driving over here. Remedial driving January, February, March, April. It's a one month class or something, right? So I go to classes. We say okay. What fields do you want over there? Well, you want the the probably the date and the time because that's we know that they're both called remedial driving. So, I mean, I guess I could put that here. Course name, put it up here, and you're like, well, that's awesome. So I go to browse mode. Okay, so then, uh, but we have to come over here and put the. The, the, you normally, you, yeah, you put the foreign key over here. I'm just going to auto, hang on, let me see this a little bit. Let me make it a little bit bigger, and I'll give you three here. Three. So we built the structure, but um, this is the ID over here, and then over here should be the, the, the you know, it's the course name, okay? But it, uh, and I'm just going to move this out of the way because that's kind of a, I threw that in there to kind of cause people's brains to explode. But it, it belongs to, I'm going to say, duplicate this. It belongs to this course. So this is the foreign key over here. This is the course. This is the parent key, okay? ID, course, foreign key, right? Makes sense. And so over here, you could have this be a lookup. In fact, it probably should be a lookup. In fact, um, what you could do is not even have this. Uh, let's do the lookup thing real quick, okay? So if we're in fields, if, if this relationship activates, so we're over here, this is where the course name starts. We say, we're gonna input this class, right? We want to take the copy of the course name and auto input it over here, okay? That's a lookup. In this case, we're gonna do a lookup, okay? Because it's a, th it's, a, it's a moment in time, we want it to lock in. How do we do a lookup? We go to fields, classes, course name, auto enter options right here, options, Auto enter options, look up value, starting with uh, classes, look up the related data from course. Give me the course name. Remember we talked about zip codes, next higher and lower. This is from like Friday of last week. We hit okay, hit okay, browse mode. So I'm over here. If I put the, what's the course number here, CO2, I come over here, put it. Um, actually, let me clear these out real quick. I did a replace with empty, empty. Okay, yes. If I click out and nothing happens because I screwed it up. What did I do wrong? Zero two, course ID, course key, layout, two minutes seconds, course ID, relationships, course foreign, course foreign. Must be the field. Margaret, do you, someone uh, tell me what I did wrong here? Course name, idea, look up. Uh, hmm. Look up value. 
starting with classes, going backwards through courses, okay? If the course, and then, uh, let me see, okay, hit okay. Someone wants to tell me what I, 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 if no one knows what I did wrong, it means they're probably not following the conversation, which is probably not great. So, so that's CO2, primary course ID, that's class. So we have CO2. Oh, oh, it is working. Okay, then what's, oh, there it goes. Okay, whatever reason it hadn't clicked. It was like hadn't processed it yet? I don't know. Or I, did, or I had a space or something in here. Something weird was going on. Oh, uh, yeah. So, okay. so if I put, see, so you could make this a pop-up list. And so the way I'm doing this is not the way you do data, data entry in real life. I'm trying to make this understandable. So we have three tables. This makes sense. This makes sense. This is remedial driving, and here are the three dates for it, okay? But then if I want to see the students over here, you're like, well, the problem is, is that there's no way to really report on it and make it useful and good when it's like this. We're missing another piece here. This is where you have to water, go back for double waterboarding, okay? You have to talk to the customer and figure out what you're missing. And, and, and people, it's a join table. It's not, just quit using the, the J word, okay? I, I, if I could reach to and slap you, I would do it nicely, okay? Um, it's a real thing. Well, what do you call it? Well, when a student signs up for a class they call that you're you're signed up for a class they call it a registration so if you actually start to realize well yeah there's a registry when we give the teacher the professor the instructor a list of all the people coming to their class we give them a registration list so they already create it in paper all you have to do is figure they've already worked the business processes out you haven't figured out the inside baseball part Right, inside baseball. It's like all the little things that go on baseball. Baseball is very technical. I don't even understand it. Well, you could do this and this and this and this and this. And this. Football is the same way. Like, well, we're going to do a double wing bing ting bo tee, and he's going to pull this way, and we're going to read down this way and throw a touchdown. Right? So, very complicated, horribly complicated. And all you, but the problem is, is that, is that you as a database person have to figure this out. Now, unlike hot air balloons, Ken, he should already understand that he has a pilot and they have balloons. And in between pilot and balloons are, you know, the the pilots who are registered or assigned to fly that balloon or have a time slot to fly the balloon. He has to go through and figure out these little these little business processes in his mind as a success. Let's back up. Most people will have a successful business and then they will say, we need database to blah, blah, blah. or they have some other software that's already doing it, but the software sucks. And they want to put it in FileMaker because they know how great it is. Okay, awesome. But the business already existed first. The business exists first. FileMaker has to fig. You have to tell FileMaker what that business is and how it works. And if it logically doesn't work here, that means that you haven't investigated. You haven't found out that there is a registration printout. It was made in Word back in the day. It was typed out on a typewriter. <laughs> Ding. And they then they then they'd. Uh, What's the spinny copier thing that you'd put the the purple ink? And it would, and it would, every piece of paper would go flying through. One of you would know what that is. Mimeograph, thank you. And so that's how they did it in the old days. All you have to do is figure out what the paper is and mimic the paper. There's nothing paper. I don't want to use paper. Yeah, but the, but it represents organizational structure within the within that business or that organization so figure out what the papers are when i go to a customer like the big valley i say give me all your forms they're like we you want my form I say yeah it tells me about so they give me the work order form and the part order form and then the discrepancy form and the time entries and they give me all the stuff and that gives me a place to start trying to wire it together and then you have to sprinkle in a couple water boardings interrogate the customer nicely and but you have to stick with it you cannot give up because if I didn't know any better, I would just under, I would be like, God, there's a join table in here, but I'm afraid to talk to the customer. I don't want them to think I'm stupid. It's like, mm -mm. you've got to have confidence in what you're doing. You have to be able to ask them and say, listen, I've got this. I'm pretty happy with this. I got this. I'm pretty happy with this, but I'm missing something in here. It's not obvious to me. How, how do instructors know who's in the class? How do they manage that? Well, we do it on paper. Okay, show me one. And they give you a piece of paper, and it's it says class title, time, date, instructor, and it's a list of all the people. And you're like, what do you call this? It's called a registration page. And so we end up having to build that. So I'm going to move myself out of the way. I'm going to move this down. We're going to move this down. I have potentially an extremely dumb question. Uh, there are no dumb questions unless it's a dumb question. What's the question? <laughs> 
Um, if you pull up, can you pull up manage relationships, please? Okay, so uh, the answer to this is going to be four. We had actually, for those of you wondering, we built this, we built this, we interrogated, got this. This would be a join table, and this would be a double extra secret probation join table. But in real world, it's called a registration, and that's how that works. So, um, but double secret probation for those of you who remember Animal House, and that's one of the funniest things I've ever seen in my life. So, uh, relational diagram is right here. So, what we're realizing is that if I come down here, I'm just going to do this and then bring it up here. And so I'm going to move these over because I'm pretty sure that every time a student is signed up for a class, that's a registration for that one student in one class. So the registration record is one unique student attending one unique class. Uh, it's why not a joint table, but it is. Why doesn't the student need to be attached in the relationship? It's not attached because we have it. Okay, back up. I'm walking everyone through this. So the idea oh, was okay. that you're over here, right? Yes. And you realize that, um, oh, hang on. Damn it. Let me just hit okay. I want to save the progress. You, that you're putting multiple values in here, right? Mm -hmm. Like, and then he wants to go to math and all this. Listen, if you put all the values in a value list, you cannot report on them individually. These four, I, these three items here are glued together. It's like if you see those yes. crazy horror stories when someone has a, a child and it's a twin, but they're Siamese twins and they're like glued together and then they try to surgically separate them. That's what that is. You can't do that, right? I mean, would you rather be glued to a person and you might die? Or would you like to be a, your own normal human? Okay. I don't think too many of them are going to go with the, I want to be glued to the other dude. Okay. <laughs> I'm being serious. This is that way. Cause you're just like, well, give me a, 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 a list of, give me a list of all the math classes that the, that this person's, that this person and all the math people have to, and give me the dates. Well, if you have math in here and it's at 1 PM, and then I have this in here and this was at 11 AM and this was at 9 AM. You can't separate these in any sort of logical, easy way. Without some crazy, gnarly, valueless shenanigans. That's oh, that. Frankly, is when it's so simple. If you just build the, the relational databases, were designed to mimic and support real world business operations. If it doesn't seem, listen, and I, can I? And I know we're kind of in the last twelve minutes here or so. If you folks are stuck on this, send me a text message or not a text message. Send me an email to support RC Consulting. I will probably, if you're stuck, answer it, make a video for you, not to build it for you, but explain to you what the missing pieces are that I can see or where the questions are. I'm happy to give you a steer if you're stuck. I'm not saying you're stuck by yourself. I'm saying we're here in this class together. If you can't figure out from this class, send me an email to support us. I'm not going to charge you for it unless you tell me, Richard, I want you to figure it out. Then build it for me, and I want it done in a week. Right then, then yeah, yeah. There might be a bill associated with that, but but the idea is that when you're when you're because think about the the gluing here, Margaret. How do you because code to go? Remember we said back up. This is the part you're missing right here. Put this in here. One student or each each record is one unique student. Okay. Okay. So if you want to put these on different line items, then you have to duplicate code to go. And then this is code to go here. Oh, damn it. Hang on. Delete. There we go. Okay, you got that one, right? And then we have this one right here. Well, yeah, but now code to go's got three lines. That violates this rule up here. Code to go's in here three times. So, so if you end up doing this, then you realize he's in here three times, and there's probably a table, for those of you who insist on calling a join table, there's probably a join table where code to go's in there more than once. And that's exactly what this is going to be over here, the registration. Okay. Oop. Students. Go to layout mode here. Paste it over here. I'm just going to say this is registration. Okay. One, and this one's good. One record equals one unique uh, student attending one unique class. All right. So then I got the registration ID right here. I'm going to put, uh, now, this is the, the how many if, like how how many times should code to go be okay so remember this matches the four that are up here these three match they're graphically correct here so how many this is one how many how many code to goes are in here margaret 
uh, there should be one code to go. And then we students. probably think there's more than one code to go in the registration. So it's a one to many. So over here in registration, I'm going to need a foreign key for, for the student ID. Uh, the student's a unique ID that says if ID, but I'll say ID student. And then the foreign key, which is the key for them. Okay. So we say registration. And so I got student primary key to student foreign key. Once again, see it right there. One to many right there. If you can see, that's kind of hard to see. There we go. Okay. How did it, I don't understand how it knew because. Because that is defined to be an auto enter every time it's unique. Oh, okay. So and this has no, because remember, how does this get popular? We talked about this yesterday. If if you populate this through the relationship, which is probably what you would do, you'd be on the student and you say, student wants to sign up for algebra. In fact, the student comes to you and say, Johnny, what do you want to take? And Code2Go goes, well, I'm busted by the, for speeding, I need the DMV class, I need algebra because I don't know how to do math, and I need English because I can't speak in English, right? And you, and you sign him up for these three things, right? You'd be on the student layout and you'd have a portal, ding, ding, ding. It creates three related records in the creation process right here, you would come over here and say, ID student, and it's going to create it automatically on this side, and you would turn that on, okay? And then over here, just for this one, you'd probably create it, allowed to create the, the child. Remember, parent, child, parent, child, and then the two children are going to meet in the middle. You're like, well, how the hell does that work? Okay, so this is a unique course, right? So uh, this, is a, this class is unique. So what we say the definition over here was of this? One record is unique, as a, as a unique student and a class. So to connect this properly, so ID fields, registration, I need uh, ID, I need the class, right? Because we want to connect it to the class. But the class has its own primary key. So this is going to be the foreign key. It's funny because you have the registration here. You'd put this on a piece of paper or something like you have register what's your registration johnny for this fall oh it's registration 5131222 we're not going to end up using this in a relationship anywhere but you still need to have it there to because uniquely identify it. it yeah somewhere you're going to need it okay so i got id class underscore foreign key i'm gonna say create notice it's not auto enter that one's auto enter because remember you, you initially create primaries for all the tables all four tables have a primary key. Primary, primary, they all have their primaries. And then if they need to talk to another one, they're going to have a foreign key, okay? Because primary key tells it's unique, okay? So then I'm going to go back over here to registration. So we have its unique number, which we're not going to use anywhere. But then to talk, connect to students, we need a foreign key. And to connect to class, we need a foreign key. And class connects to course, okay? So we go back over here. I'm going to go to the... Uh, class primary key and connect it to class right here. I'm going to hit OK. And then I'm going to put this up here. And so once you have done this, you can uh, bring the value all the way through. But this is essentially at the end of the day. So you create a new record. And you'd have the student ID. Go to browse mode over here. I'm going to make this a little smaller. Yeah. And then we have the class. Say that we're going to do. Uh, they're all. So let's say code to go is going to do. Um, the February remedial driving, okay, class right there, okay, and and so this is not how you do data entry, but this is the relational structure behind the scenes of how it works. And so then there's code to goes primary or for primary key there goes in here. That constitutes a complete function end to end right now because if I come over here, I can say, well, you know, why don't you show me the name of the student? Why don't we just do a relational hook on this? So we're going to say, show me from the student. Give me the student name. Okay, perfect. We'll do it relation. We won't do the lookup. And then over here, I want the course classes. I want the course name. Put that over here like that. Browse mode. Ah, code to go is in remedial driving. And you could bring over the date and time on here too. New record. Uh, view as a list. Oh, hang on. Sorry. If you have a list, you want the body part to be pretty small. Go back to browse mode. Now we have a list. So then uh, Austin is going to be in there too. So Austin is S06. Okay. Ah, see it? Connected to Austin. So we've attached. These two are now functional. And then we want class 
zero three is uh, you know remedial driving. So now it completely works. The whole thing works. You have four pieces across. Can you bring up the relationship graph again for me, please? Yeah, sorry about that, Margaret. You had to step out. So this is this is actually for those of you wondering. Is back this what it would? Sorry, go ahead. This was the this was on the certification test, and you had to be able to understand and identify this. Not only that, they added one more over here. To um, I'm going to create one more table just so you could see what it looked like. Instructors, and those are people. And if I go to instructors, I'm going to delete all these real quick. So you you get that. So where would so as just for fun, ID instructor primary key. Where, where would you connect the instructor to? Margaret? I, so you could, the instructor what, 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 would be connected what, 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 to class? Yes, right? because the, the instructor is going to teach a class. So if we go back okay. to defining the relationships, then what you do, you have instructor, you come down here, and the instructor, yeah, but see, this is an instructor, it's actually double whammy. Because instructor is one unique instructor. So then you have a, a oh, instructor. Oh, wait, no, it would be a course. Not, well, because oh, you're going to have one guy teach every math class for the next 20 years. No, or one gal. No, it's worse than this, right? Because then you start, then when you get like me, you start, these are unique instructors. Then you have an instructor, uh, I will, I'm going to call it job assignment because they're getting paid, right? I'm going to create a table called that, right? Okay, delete, okay, ID, ID I'm just going to call it ID job assignment, okay, create. I'm going to have the ID, and so if I go over here, the job assignment's right here, so it connects up and down this way. You need instructor. That instructor can have a job. He can have more than one job at a time. In fact, he could teach math class. Or he could teach the driving class three times. And after the third time, he quits because code to go drives him nuts. code to go says, how fast do you go? And code to go says, I just push the gas pedal all the way to down, and I hold it down. And the person says, okay, I don't want to be instructor here anymore. But see how that works. So that's a unique instructor. This is a job assignment. Whoa, what is your, what is your teaching schedule? Oh, right? It goes this way. It goes this way. This is awesome stuff. J.A. McRae, I finally came up with the right name for the table occurrence. The light bulb goes off over the customer's head, and uh, well, I'm trying to make sense of the waterboarding session. Uh, J.A. McRae, you are absolutely welcome to all of you. If you get stuck, just email me. I will make a short video for, especially if I recognize you. Use your use your fighter pilot. All of you have fighter pilot call signs. Like code to go is code to go on final approach. Weapons hot, right? Use your, you cool, use your cool fighter pilot call sign. Like Jay McRae is probably a call sign for someone else. Whatever. That's cool. Um, or maybe that's your real name. That's fine. Just let me know. That way I recognize you. Because if I know who you are, I'm more inclined to spend time on, on my behalf to help you. Okay. And so if you get stuck, let me know. But that's what this is about. And and so does this make sense without me connecting it? So we'd have to, over here, you'd have, these are the primary keys, but then over here to connect this to this way, you'd have that foreign key in here, both ways, right? You want me to yeah. just do that real quick? I'm more interested in understanding how you would anchor buoy this out, because you can't, this couldn't actually go live the way it currently looks, right? Or So here's the instructor foreign key to the instructor primary key, and then the instructor uh class foreign up to the class primary key right there okay so then maybe you would do it like this and then like this and then maybe bring oh we're cross i hate it see when it crosses streams like that everyone i tend to oh, what happened come back i tend to keep it straight i hate crossing the streams like that so what i'll do is i deliberately will re-monkey stuff so it looks like this so that this the class is where everyone meets like we want to rumble let's meet i'll meet you at one o'clock bring your friends bring your knives bring your baseball bats we're gonna fight right this is where they all meet the course comes in there the instructors come in there the students come in there right I will give this file to everyone. Uh, so Anchor Buoy. So you want to see how this would work with Anchor Buoy real fast? Okay, everyone, buckle up. This is the two-minute brain dump. Anchor Buoy works at every layout, is 
on the anchor, you're building it out to that. So what I would do is I would take this and I would, um, okay, this is going to be awesome. So that's TO1. Then I would do is I would come over here like this and I would do that. And that's your second tog. If you're in a hurry, now you don't want unnecessary ones, but see how that works? See? Yeah, okay. And then so you would, you... And, and you'd, and so basic is that this belongs to a layout, this belongs to a layout. You keep doing that, but you don't put the ones in here you don't need. I'm just duplicating them all. I mean, the problem is, okay, back up. Why anchor buoy? Okay, I'm going to hit okay. <sighs> Give me two seconds here. This. Uh, I can also grab, oh, okay, yeah. I got this. This this is easy. So here's the deal. So when you start building stuff, it starts looking like this. Okay. You start it off over here with the one over here. I can't jump over there. Remember that diagram just a second ago. And you start organizing it. Okay. The rub is the more crap you connect, the slower it goes. So you only want to put the stuff on it that you need. A J. A. McRae, you only want to put the stuff on it that you need. That way, because when you go to a layout here. FileMaker is going to evaluate every one of these. Fast, go fast. Back and forth between you and the FileMaker server. And then it's going to go over here and go. No, those are going faster. Those are slower. Because the farther you get, it goes slower. Right? Doing two or three is not too bad. Doing five might be unusable depending on what you're doing. So what you want to do is, is while this is... Uh, what you would do is you'd probably duplicate, uh, come over here, and you do you would do this. You would say, "Oh, I don't really need this one. Remove, uh, and I don't really need this one." Okay, okay. So the tables are still here. The layouts need to be coded to only work with your anchors over here. So t that anchor, that anchor. And then you could make them all nice and pretty and line them up and number them, okay? And then you'd have, that's re students, that's registration, then you'd have classes. So I take classes over here. I'm going to duplicate it wherever it went. I can't make that go away. Duplicate it, then bring it down. And then kind of reorganize it a little bit. So classes over here. Huh. Oh, nope, nope, cancel that. Over here, move that over here and move that down up like that and then you start kind of reorganizing it so oh, it doesn't look bad right you have that down here and then you have this one down here right and then you start right but rebuilding it right see how that works and then so then you have this anchor buoy there's absolutely no uh downside to re flipping these around left and right it doesn't matter a lot of times i try to do left and right to match the layouts on screen the window on screen like this top one up here match the four across here then i put structures here and screwed it up so Anyway, I hope that this derives value. Please email me and ask me if you're stuck. I would rather you be, I'd rather you bother me and be unstuck. I want you to be as nice as I can say this. I honestly mean this at the bottom of my heart. I need, I want, I need, I want all of you to be successful with FileMaker. The world needs great data systems to make life simple, okay? Post-it notes in Excel just can't get you there. And Google Sheets, despite what anyone thinks, is not a database, okay? So I, I want all of you to be successful. So with that in mind, shoot, shoot me an email to support at rcconsult.com. If you're stuck, put as much information there. I will probably not write it back for you in writing. I will probably make a short video that will be specific to you, okay? Any questions, Margaret? No. Uh, Reseeing it as Anchor Buoy helped, helped me, actually, because I'm just so used to seeing it that way that seeing... Does it make sense now, though? Because then you, you're you like, well, it's like really not very pretty, right? Like, I want it to be like small like that, and then blah, 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 I want small like that, and then, <laughs> then like this, and then it looks like this. And it was just like that I was mentally blah, trying blah, to figure blah, out blah, how, blah, like, blah, the center blah. table worked with um, my conception of what relationships are. Yes. Well, there you go. So I did the trans. I did the conversion for you. You're like, yes. well well you should just kept the one listen if your if your school solution is as simple and and you only have five or six layouts or something then you don't have to do anchor buoy on it but the reality is anchor buoy while i'm explaining many to many relationships here most people don't build it that way they start building they build a layout and they start gluing they duct tape stuff on the layout anchor buoy is designed that as you build layouts you build anchors and then you glue in the pieces over here that you need to support that you need to support what you're trying to get done. Okay, does that make sense?
So most time people won't fully sketch it all the way out. Well, no, I imagine the whole discovery of um, many to many tables is what results in spiders being born. <laughs> Yes. Well, yeah, no, it's, yeah, well, yeah. A spider being born is someone who's not ex exercising. It. They don't know any better, or if they know better, they're not exercising any self-control, right? That's like eating everything at the uh, all-you-can-eat buffet. So anyway, um, all right, yeah, so you want to exercise a little self-control, or you have too many girth units, ask me. Otherwise, I have to be able to fit in the helicopter. Uh, the ERD confused the process of many-to-many. Not sure what you mean by ERD, Mike. You know what you mean? The problem is, is in ERD. Okay, so here's the pro problem. This essentially was kind of an ERD, entity relationship diagram. It's where an ERD. Okay, here's the deal. An ERD, every table is on the graph once, but that's not what FileMaker is. For example, for Mikey Mike, Mike, I don't know which Mikey Mike this is. Say the instructor has to write the student up because they're a bad student. And they, and they, so code to go is smoking weed in the driving class, okay? Could happen. How would you connect the instructor to doing, a, you know, having a disciplinary interaction with a student? Not with this structure. And you, and FileMaker won't allow you to directly connect the student, the instructor to a student. See, it won't allow that. We talked about that yesterday or Friday. You would have to create a new table occurrence of the instructor, and the instructor's over here, and then you would have to, and so the instructor's now on here twice. Forget all this other stuff down here. Forget all that, okay? Remove that crap. Forget all that. Instructor's on here twice. That's a violation of the ERD. That's because this is not an ERD, right? It, it looks like it quacks like it, but it's not an ERD. So then you're like, well, how does the instructor talk to the student? Because what if, what if code to go was doing donuts in the parking lot? Uh, it's called breaking friction. If you pull over and get a ticket, it's called breaking friction, not donuts or, or skidding or sliding or peeling, burning rubber. It's called breaking friction, the technical term. So we have breaking friction and smoking weed, two incidents, okay? So we would have to define a table called, uh, hmm, disciplinary incidents, which I can't spell, okay? Create the table, edit the table, get rid of the fields, delete the fields, okay? ID, ID, <laughs> busted, <laughs> primary key, okay? Primary key, not pi, okay? Create it, option, serial number, busted, bust, zero, one. Okay, so they'll all be called bust, okay? Then you're gonna need it to connect it to the, and I'm just cutting to the end because we're out of time. I should have already shut off the live stream. But you keep asking questions, I keep going. ID instructor underscore foreign key, create. ID student foreign key. Okay, create. Uh, go to relationships. The instructor connects to the ID instructor here. And then the instructor, student foreign key, connects the student here. Now we have a system where, because a disciplinary record is one specific moment where code to go screwed up and got written up. Sorry, sir, you can't do donuts in the, in the, or passing the highway patrol person on the freeway. Uh, uh, uh. As if I had no idea how to do that or I've ever done that before. So this, this TO name here cannot be the same as this TO name over here. So once again, this is not Anchor Buoy, but I'm demonstrating that now instructor's on here more than once. That's a violation of the rules of the road. If you were doing an ERD, if you were doing an ERD, I'm going to duplicate this, what you would have done, and FileMaker won't let you, oop, hang on, get rid of those. File, remove this. What you would have done is that you would get rid of this, Remove that one, and then you'd cross-connect this one over to this one like that. So we'd do like this looping around. Remember the circular reference? You can't have a circular reference, right? So you'd move this one up here like this or something like this, and then you connect it down here to something like that, right? But then you have a circular reference. can't have that in FileMaker. So it's not in ERD, but it looks like it, okay? All right, that's it. I'm going to hit done. I got to go do donuts with code to go. Woo! Ha, 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 ha.